Playing with snow is lots of fun. But if you want to keep your hands warm, you have to wear mittens or gloves because the snow feels cold. Take some snow into your bare hand. The longer you hold it, the colder your fingers get. Why? Is it because cold flows from the snow to your hands or because heat passes from your hand to the snow, as people believed long ago? If heat is an invisible matter that flows in or out of materials, we should be able to weigh it. In order to find out more about heat, let's experiment again with ice. Like all other materials, ice is thought by scientists to be made up of very tiny particles called molecules. The molecules of all matter, including ice, are constantly moving. The speed of molecules increases when heated. So, when we heat ice, its molecules move faster and faster till those on the outside break away to form a liquid, water. Air can be heated in another way called convection. Here you see heated air carrying the tinfoil upward. The heated air rises because cold air is heavier and pushes the warm air upward. But the sun heats the earth by a third means, called radiation. Heat can travel by conduction and convection only if there is some material present. Rays from the sun, however, must travel through empty space, by this third way, by radiation. This is how it works. The large bulb is giving out radiant energy. Air has been pumped out of the bulb. Even so, when its radiant energy strikes the thermometer, it is absorbed and changed into heat energy. In this film, we have explored several things about heat. We learned that heat is a form of energy caused by the motion of molecules. The faster molecules move, the more heat energy there is in a material. We saw that heat may change the state of materials from solids to liquids to gases, that it causes materials to contract and to expand, and that some materials are good conductors of heat and others are poor conductors. Next time you play in the snow, think why we say that even snow and ice have some heat in them.